The very first thing I'd do if I were to learn professional game development from scratch is choose Unity as my game engine and then go follow this 32 episode tutorial series by Tom Francis that teaches you everything that you need to know even if you've never written a line of code in your life. And Tom Francis is the creator of awesome games like Gunpoint and Heat Signature, so he's a great person to learn from, and everybody who I've recommended this series to has told me that it is the most approachable entry point they've ever encountered for game development. And you may be wondering, why Unity instead of another engine like Godot, Unreal, or GameMaker, and it's super simple? Straight up, there are just way more resources for the engine. Either way, if you follow the tutorial series for about 14 hours a week and spend about 2.5 hours per video, it should take you about 5 weeks to get this done and you'll have a great base to start with. And if you want to do more or less every week, you can definitely adjust how often you work on the series, but of course it will also affect how long it takes you overall. One key thing that you should also do after you've done this tutorial is expand on the ideas that the series teaches you how to do. So since it teaches you how to make a stealth game, you should try to branch out a bit and see what it's like to create your own enemies for the game, for example, from your own creativity. And you can do this during the tutorial series, but if you really have no experience, then I'd refrain from doing this because it teaches bug fixing really well as well. So if you're not used to doing that yet, it might work against you as you might introduce bugs that you're just not properly equipped to handle. And so maybe try to do this for about three weeks or so, and it's really gonna help your creativity and knowing your limits. After you're done with the tutorial stuff, you should try to do something very specific, and that is choose a niche or genre that you're going to focus on for six months to a year, and be prepared to stick to that, and it'll be apparent why in just a second. And after you've chosen a niche, you should try to split it up into the components that make it work. So for example, if your aim is to make something like Hollow Knight, you can split it up like this. So firstly, of course, you'd want a platform or movement system, and then after that, you'd also want a dialogue system, and then another thing to implement would be more advanced movement abilities like a double jump, dash, and stuff like that. Then you'd also want some sort of attack system with entities that have health. And then you'd also want to have advanced entities with health that have attacks and movement patterns, which are basically enemies. And then finally, you'd also want a badge system that modifies your attacks and other aspects of the combat system to make it more complex. And that's it, right? That's basically what Hollow Knight is. And so what do you do next? Well, you have to make a small game for each of those points. The split up with Hollow Knight has about six parts, and I think that something of that scope works really well with the strategy, since you can spend about two months on each, and you'd be done in a year. So to take you through this example, so that you can imagine how you would do this with your own dream game or your own niche, the first part would be to make a platformer movement system, so you could make a small game with zero combat or anything. It's kind of like a walking sim with environmental storytelling. You could even use assets from the Unity Asset Store or really anywhere online to make it look nice and get used to that aspect of game development with the decoration and everything, but I'd leave the complexity of the game at that and move on to the next point, which is the dialogue system, right? And it's really simple to just take everything that you learned from making the simple platformer, re-implement it to reinforce what you learned, and then add the dialogue system on top, so now you have a walking sim with dialogue, and already that's a pretty nice step up from the previous game. Then, of course, there's the next part, which is the one where you implement advanced movement abilities, and you can just do exactly that. A walking sim with dialogue and advanced movement abilities that you might get throughout the adventure, and this is where you can maybe add some more interesting obstacles to the level design as well. Then, you take this one step further with an attack system and have breakable crates or something like that using the same base as before, and again, re-implementing everything so that you can really reinforce your skills and get used to thinking about how you can improve on your previous work. And then the next step would be to try to make some enemies and now you're really starting to get really close to a real full game. And I suggest you release the ones before this one as free projects, which you can do on many websites like for example itch.io or gamejolt, that's the one that I used to use when I was sorting out, or even just send it to friends. But when you get something of this kind of complexity with the enemies and stuff like that, you might already want to start looking at Steam and release it as a cheap-ish kind of game. After that, you can add the badge system, which adds further complexity to the combat, and now you've basically got Hollow Knight on a mechanical level, and the only thing that's holding you back now is your ideas. I think that point is an important one to stress. In game development, the hard part is not really making the game, but rather making the decisions about how the game works that makes it fun. 
So the thing that you should really try to do from here on out is try to experiment with different mechanics and approaches to design and over time you will feel that your games get better if you get the proper feedback and take it to heart. So the aspect of launching your game into the public, whether that's for free or other ways or just sending it to friends, that aspect is really important. And so if you were just aiming to make games for fun, you can kind of stop there, maybe try to break up different genres and try different things or really try to polish your craft on your own time and you actually don't really even have to release on Steam at all. But what if you want to make this your career? Well, at this point, you have a great repository of knowledge to make a 30 minute demo or something and either pitch it to publishers to get funding or run a Kickstarter campaign. Through releasing so many games of the same type, you may have also built a small following and that could really be enough to kick this whole thing into gear. But another key thing you can do is continue to do this approach where you split up games into different parts, but instead of releasing them for free, you can try to release them at a lower price point and use the money you make from those games to fund your studio or a bigger version of those games, which is actually exactly what I do. So if you're interested, you can check out my games in the description. And this particular approach is really powerful because one advantage that you'll develop as you get better is that your code will become more and more reusable. So you won't have to redo all of your systems like in the beginning stages of your journey. And so you'll become more efficient and be able to focus more on what really makes a game great. And that is the design. So by making these small games and splitting everything into parts, you don't only incrementally improve as a developer, you also incrementally improve your toolset of reusable systems. Personally, I like to use this little framework that I made for myself in deciding whether a smaller game is worth pursuing, and I call it the quest method. And that is because it's based on how side quests and main quests work in RPGs. So when you play an RPG, you've got the main quest, which is your objective, and you've got side quests, which you can optionally do along your journey, right? Well, you could theoretically go straight for the main quest, but you'll likely be a bit underpowered, so you'll want to take on some side quests to level up and obtain gear first. But the side quests you take help you much more if the rewards are related to your character class, so if you're a warrior, you don't really want to get gear that works better for a mage, so my framework works the same way. When I'm making small games, I'm thinking about my main goal, which is my bigger games, and then I think to myself whether the learning that I gather from a small game will help me level up in the right way. This could be either about improving myself as a developer, which is kind of like leveling up, or it could also be about creating reusable code, which you can make a comparison to finding gear. So if you'd like to see how I've done this so far, I've put the link to both of my released games, which are Wanted Shadows and Soulstalker in the description, which you can get for super cheap in a bundle, or you can also check out my bigger game, Synth Beasts, which takes aspects from both of these, and thanks to the smaller ones, this game was able to be what it is. And if you'd really like to help me out, you can wishlist Synth Beasts, since it boosts it so much in the Steam algorithm. It's just super, super helpful. And I also recently made a video about how you can apply this quest method to fund your game studio, so you can check that out on the screen right now, and make sure to subscribe as well. Anyways, that's it for this week's video, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.